Hello everyone, Trapper Master here, and welcome back to this real life racing series where we go to K1 Speed for the Challenge Grand Prix in Orlando. This is for October, so this is going to be round 10, but this is actually round 9 um, of the like that's actually going to be counted for the championship so far. Because um, in June we actually had a championship, and I couldn't get, um, get a chance to footage it with the GoPro because I accidentally made it in a hyperlapse, so uh, it didn't really like you know get the footage properly so i never ended up showing it but um so yeah that round actually ended up being dropped because the corporate system for these new one speeds not all the tracks were run, running operational so what they've decided to do is to drop that that round for the month and then they have a makeup race in november so that basically means after this race we're gonna have three races at the end of the year instead of two so that kind of leaves things in an interesting situation as a result it actually gave me my uh Ten, like seven second gap that I have right now like if it went for that I probably would be second in the standings because June was not exactly a good month for me so being that that was dropped it kind of puts me like the championship in my favor with uh, three rounds le left after the after this one but um yeah because it, it's a very good situation but yeah in qualifying here this is the, no, we'll go ahead and talk about right now is um the carts were just really close together they were naked tuck it was the differences between the cards and quality were almost negligible like you, you could tell there was like a couple differences some of them had different driving styles and stuff but in terms of lap time there weren't any like outliers that were really awful cards there were some that were maybe slightly slower than others but it wasn't something ridiculous because as a result in qualifying here i got a um 25 1 8 well, 25 1 yeah 8 9 4 actually and that put me in third place and the pole guy got a um, 25062, I believe it was. And yeah, second place was only like 14 thousandths ahead of me. That put us in third place for the starting grid. And it was very interesting because it's like normally that time would put you on pole, what, what I set. But uh, it's just the carts have gotten so good to this point where it's, it's really just down to the drivers at this point. And now off the start, get a very good start, put myself in the P2, just tuck to the inside get, and just reacted properly and I just decided to slot him behind Robert here Robert Bird just coming in he actually had an interesting situation going up to the start grid because when we were heading out onto the track his parts was just like switching on and off and they were checking on it before like the start of the race to make sure it wasn't it was all good and it was good to race but it was it was interesting so I was like thinking maybe there's a weakness to that card and I might be able to exploit it to get past them and that was in my mindset when I was getting going here, so I was like, maybe I'll just try to see when when an opening opens up. And it wasn't going to happen around this area. It was going to have to be in the turn one, because I noticed he was slow in turn one. So maybe I can tuck up under him and maybe get him into turn two, and that's and that's probably going to be the best move I could probably do, because there's not a whole lot of overtaking opportunities around this track. So yeah, it, actually right here, I was going to try something like that, but he actually was too far away, and I was like, all right, I'll just tuck him in the racing line. But... He actually slid out a little bit, caught me off guard, so I was so I had to hit the brakes to make sure not to slam him too hard. And yeah, it, it looked like he was really all, so, all over the place. But yeah, the turn one was definitely a weakness of his, so I was going to go ahead and exploit that on this next lap here. I was right, just take the normal racing line, tuck up under him, get a little bit of slipstream, swing out wide, and cut back right in. And here is where I thought I made the move done, it's stick and done. But actually what happened, his cart actually ended up dying there right as I was passing him. So it kind of left an interesting dilemma here. So they actually had to stop the race because his cart died. So um, it, we basically put it so that he had, we had to stop the car race, uh, make sure he swapped his carts and everything, and then we have to uh, wait until he kind of gets back into position. So what ended up happening is we actually started going side by side. Well, a, uh, and yeah, I'm going to let uh, Dan kind of explain it here. Guys, we're going to restart this race one moment. We had a car completely die out. It's not moving, so we will replace it. It's a complete failure on the cart, so we're going to replace this cart. Uh, one moment, once we get that inflated, we're going to allow them to come back up. It's all good. And 
And with that in mind, we actually got back on the road. I basically had to wait for Robert to get side by side with me in the scenario because I was just going to hold it until they give me the go. And yeah, this is where they did it. So they, I basically just let him have the inside here and I ended up actually having a better run. So it actually... I mean, I guess in the end, I actually got the position, but I, I don't know. I feel I feel like I probably should have gave him the position fully back, but they they thought I, sh I should have kept the side-by-side uh, -side situation and just let us battle it out that way, but I don't know. I, I felt bad in, this, in the situation, but knowing afterwards that hit the cart that he actually got swapped into now, uh, it basically caused a giant uh, pain train because um, that cart that he got swapped into didn't exactly have good speed either. Uh, I kind of feel a little better about like making that move stick there because if I didn't do that I probably would have been stuck behind that train as well and as you can see here I'm already pulling out a little bit of a gap to Robert and it's it's causing a bit of a train behind me that's and I'm pulling away from it so I was right I'm like I'm just gonna go ahead and pounce on this while I can take advantage and just pull away from the gap and that's actually what I ended up doing and I'll and I won't say exactly right now but near the end of the race I'll uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you guys exactly the like, the huge gap that it was it was it was quite massive i was actually in a, like a different area code <laughs> that's a, that's another way to describe it but like but yeah i hope you guys do enjoy this kind of content i hope you guys do enjoy if you do please feel free to leave a like and if you guys want to see more of this in the future please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you and if you want to like be alerted when i upload those videos feel free to hit the bell if you want as well and with that in mind i'll see you guys next time
I don't believe it. Woo! Kick it along, guys. Kick it along. Woo! First one of the year, boys. Finally. Finally in the year, I get one. So I've won the championship. I haven't had a win yet, and I finally get one. That's what I needed. Put me up one. <laughs> Throw me up one. There you go. There you go. Nope, damn it. No. Reverse. Can I have drift tires so I can do donuts? <laughs> First one of the year. First one. Thank you. Thank goodness. 